is uh, me, Detective Sledgehammer. I want to welcome you to uh, Online Kids Church for this Sunday. You know, I've been called in because, uh, you know, there's been a public disturbance, some reports of a public disturbance. I'm going to be taking some, uh, you know, eyewitness accounts and stuff like that. Something about a, a guy riding in on a donkey, people waving palm branches or something. I'm not quite sure, but I'll be taking some accounts so that we can get to the bottom of this. Hey, kids, you know what? I could really go for right now is a donut. Do, do any of you guys have a donut you can share? I know you're at home watching the uh, Kids Church online. You know what? Maybe you have a donut that you can share with. Hold on a second. Hold on. Ha! Look at this right here. I got me a donut in my pocket. <laughs> oh, kids, it doesn't get much better than this. I got donut in one cheek and I got gum in the other. <laughs> Hey kids, you know what? Right now, I want you to listen to uh, DJ DJ Twix. He's gonna tell you what's up today. Yo yo yo, kids! DJ Twix in the house. I'm here to tell you what's up. This week is Palm Sunday. We're all learning about the road Jesus traveled when he entered the city of Jerusalem, riding on a donkey. The road Jesus traveled leads to life. And that there is what's up. So anytime somebody asks you, what's up? You tell them, I will walk the road of Jesus because it leads to life. Wait, hold up. Jesus is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and he came into Jerusalem on a donkey? That's right. He came in on a donkey, and all the people of Jerusalem welcomed him. They were cheering, and they were singing, and even shouting, Hosanna! Some of them even took off their coats and laid them down in front of him. And others cut down palm branches from the trees, and they, they waved them at him. They wanted Jesus to be their king. When Jesus started traveling on the road to Jerusalem, he knew what was going to happen when he entered the city. But he also knew that in just a few short days, the people of Jerusalem, they were going to turn on him. They were going to want him dead. Can you believe that, kids? The shouts of praise, Hosanna! They turned into shouts of hate. Crucify him! But Jesus chose to walk that road because of you and me. Jesus knew that his death would bring us life. And that is what's up today. So anytime, I mean anytime, somebody asks you, what's up? You tell them, I will walk the road of Jesus because it leads to life. Does that mean that we're going to need to ride in on a donkey when we go back to school? No way! And does that mean that people are going to hate us and try to crucify us? I sure hope not! It means that we accept the sacrifice Jesus willingly made for us and choose to love Him and serve Him. We choose the road Jesus paid for us. And that right there is what's up. Remember kids, life is good when you keep Jesus in the mix. DJ Twix, I'm out, baby. Yo, yo, yo kids, what's up? I will walk the road of Jesus because it leads to life. All right, there we go. Hey, oh, sorry about that, kids. Hey, you know, uh, we got a crime scene here, an active crime scene, as they say in police world. You know what, kids, uh, right now we're going to sing a worship song. So why don't you all stand to your feet? We got a brand new song for you. It's called Hosanna Rock.
So clap your hands and wave your arms. Play the drums and then rock the guitar. So clap your hands and wave your arms. You can play. Clap your hands and wave your arms. Play the drums and then rock the guitar. Yo, 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 kids, what's up? I will walk the road of Jesus because it leads to life. Hey, kids, it's me, Paul Palmer, proprietor of Palmer's Professional Prize Palms. But today, I'm going to be the proprietor of the power verse. If there's one thing that tickles my fancy more than anything else, it's uh, it starts with a P. Do you think you can guess it? Hang on, let me go grab it. It's some penne pasta with some peaches. Mmm, my favorite dish. Mmm, this is so good. Mmm, boys and girls, this is delicious. Mmm. I love me some penne pasta and peaches. But you know what's a close second? Is my famous prized palm trees, just like these ones back here. Anyways, my prized palm trees have taken the cake in several prized palm festivals, like the Porterville Palm Festival, the Palmdale Palm Festival, the Pacifica Palm Festival, the Palo Alto Palm Festival, and the Palo Verde Palm Festival. All this talk of palm trees reminds me of our lesson for this week. In fact, Palm trees played a huge role in our lesson because today is Palm Sunday. Oh, that reminds me, we got to learn the power verse. And our power verse today is found in John chapter 12, verse 13. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. John 12, 13. 13. You know, boys and girls, one thing that really bum fuzzles me is why in the world they would cut down prized palm branches and wave them to Jesus. Well, the long and short of the story is they wanted Jesus to be their king, and that's how they showed him some honor, waving those palm branches at Jesus. You know what, boys and girls? I'm feeling kind of generous today. I want you to help me. I don't just want to be the proprietor of the power verse. I want you to say it along with me. Can you help me on the count of three? One, two, three. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. John 12, 13. Great job, kids. Now you can tell your mom and dad that you too are the proprietor of the power verse today. You know, kids, they were praising Jesus with palm branches. They actually went over there and cut them palm branches down, and they started waving them as he's riding into town on a donkey. Boy, I sure am glad they don't honor people like that today. I'd be really upset if someone went out and cut down my professionally prized palms just to wave them at someone and honor them. 
We may not praise Jesus today by waving those palm branches at him, but we can still give him honor in other ways. One thing we can do is worship him, you know, listening to worship music. Another thing we can do is to pray, you know, just talking to him. And finally, we can honor Jesus by reading his word. Oh, speaking of his word, that reminds me. Can you say that power verse with me one last time? After all, you are proprietors of the power verse today. Let's go. On the count of three. One, two, three. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the king of Israel. John 12, 13. Boy, howdy. That sure was powerful. That was an awesome job, boys and girls. Well, boys and girls, my professional prize palms, you know, being that they are the best in the West, they need some pruning, and I got to go get them ready for the Pasadena Palm Festival. Just remember, my name is Paul Palmer, proprietor of Palmer's Professional Prize Palms. My palms here, they need some pruning. I got to get, because, you know, they are the best in the West. I'll see you later, kids. Bye. Sledgehammer again. Uh, uh, you know, I was just enjoying a, a donut and some coffee, a little cup of joe, as they say, <laughs> in Chicago. Hey, you know what? Uh, we got an active crime scene here. I'm still doing some investigating. I just need to take a little coffee break. Hey, you know what, kids? Though it is time for it is time for the lesson of the day. So sit back and here's the lesson. Pastor Steve's gonna bring it to you right now. Today is Palm Sunday. Today is the day that we remember and celebrate the day that Jesus rode into the city of Jerusalem riding on a donkey. What a joyful day. The people of Jerusalem welcomed Jesus and they shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna means save us. They were looking to Jesus to be the savior of Israel. They were looking to Jesus to deliver them from the Roman Empire. Some of, the, some of the, the townspeople took off their coats and laid them in front of the donkey so that the, even the hooves of the donkey would not even touch the ground. Others cut off palm branches and waved them at Jesus as he rode in. They were giving Jesus the parade of a king. They wanted Jesus to be their king. You know what, kids? Jesus is our king. And that's our first point for today, is that Jesus is our king. But you know what, kids? Jesus wasn't the king that the people of Israel were thinking he would be. They thought he would come in as a victorious warrior and conquer Rome, and they would no longer be under Roman rule. But that's not what Jesus was bringing. Jesus didn't ride in on a horse as a victorious warrior, did he? No, he didn't. Jesus rode in on a donkey. You see, kids, when a uh, military leader would, or a conquering general would come into a city, and if they were riding on a horse, that meant they were declaring war upon that city. But if they rode in on a donkey, that meant they were bringing peace to that city. And that is what Jesus was doing. He wasn't bringing peace over Roman rule. He was bringing peace over sin. He was bringing peace between their relationship and God. That's what Jesus was bringing. You know, the people of Jerusalem were excited to see Jesus coming. They had seen and heard of the things that he had been doing. What did they see and hear? What, what, what things had Jesus done? Well, let's see. He's healed the blind. He's healed the, those with leprosy. He's healed the lame people who couldn't walk, could walk again. He fed f over 5,000 people with just five loaves of bread and two small fish. He spoke with authority like no one had ever done before. He challenged the Pharisees and other religious leaders. He even called them hypocrites. The people saw this. Jesus even raised the dead. 
They were excited. They thought he was the one that would come in and defeat Rome. The people of Jerusalem had heard that Jesus was in the town of Bethany. Bethany was just two miles away from Jerusalem. He was really close, and they had also heard that he was coming to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. And you know what? They were ready for him. They were ready for him to come. And as he entered that city, they celebrated Jesus coming. But you know what, kids? When Jesus started that journey on that road to Jerusalem from Bethany, he knew exactly what was going to happen. He knew that people were going to wave palm branches at him. He knew that people were going to lay their coats down in front of the donkey as he rode into the city. He knew that they were going to shout, Hosanna, Messiah, King. But he also knew what was going to come after that. He knew that in just a few short days, that crowd that was shouting, Hosanna, Savior, would be the same crowd that would be shouting angrily and in hate, crucify him, crucify him. Do you think that stopped Jesus from traveling on that road? No way. Jesus knew what his purpose was. Jesus wasn't coming to Jerusalem to just celebrate the Passover. Jesus wasn't just coming to Jerusalem to have people shout, Hosanna, Hosanna, and wave palm branches and lay down their coats in front of him. Jesus came for a purpose. Jesus came to bring life to you and to me. And that's our second point for today, guys, is that Jesus chose to travel down the road to life. Kids, the thing is, is that Jesus knew that the road to bring life to you and to me would ultimately result in his death on the cross. But Jesus willingly chose to travel that road. Remember, kids, Jesus came to bring peace, peace in our relationship with God. And the only way that we could have peace in our relationship with God was for there to be a perfect, sinless sacrifice. And that sacrifice was God's one and only son, Jesus. But here's the thing, kids. We need to choose to walk the road of Jesus. You know, Jesus didn't walk the road for nothing. And his journey from entering the city of Jerusalem to his betrayal to his death on the cross, that doesn't just give us life. We need to make a decision to walk the road of Jesus. And when we choose this, when we say yes to Jesus, the Bible says that we have eternal life. Just as Jesus chose to walk that road, we have to choose to walk the road of Jesus. What does that mean? It means that we must accept the sacrifice Jesus made for us for the forgiveness of our sin. And we need to proclaim Jesus as the king of our life. Remember, kids, Jesus is our king. We need to choose the road of Jesus. And just like our What's Up says, we will walk the road of Jesus because it leads to life. Maybe there's some of you today that have never accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior. You've never said yes to Jesus. And you know what, kids? You could do that today, right now, as you're sitting in your own home. All I ask for you to do is to bow your heads and close your eyes and say this prayer after me. Say, Dear Jesus, thank you. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for choosing to walk down that road for me, to give me life. I accept your sacrifice, and I ask you to be my Savior, to take away all of my sin, and to make me new. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, kids, if you said that prayer for the first time, or maybe the first time in a long time, you are now saved. The Bible says that you have eternal life. That is awesome. Hey kids, uh, Detective Sledgehammer. Thank you very much, Pastor Steve, for that good work. Hey, you know what, kids? We appreciate you coming out for Kids Church today. 
Hey, you know, we're going to be here next week too. So be sure to come back. I'm going to get to the bottom of this case. I'm pretty sure that the guy that they say made this disturbance is actually the king of kings and the lord of lords. But I don't know. But I'm pretty sure. You know what I mean? What do you kids think? Hey, until next time, I'll see you right here on Kids Church Online. See you later, kids.